Hey guys, welcome to the channel and what we are going to talk about today is the Sennheiser Ambio Plus. Now, in the past, I have reviewed the Sennheiser Ambio Max as it's called right now. That time it was just the Sennheiser Ambio and it was this huge soundbar with more than 13 drivers and it just sounded absolutely awesome. I'm going to link my review in the description below so you guys can go and check it out. But the point is that was a one bar for all purposes. If you had a relatively decent sized living room or you were making a dedicated room into a home theater room and you didn't want to have a subwoofer, satellite speakers, you wanted one really big soundbar to cater to all your needs and the Ambio Max was a great uh, device for the price today. It's priced at about 2, 2.2 lakh rupees. And it's still a great soundbar if you're looking for a single solution without having satellite speakers or a subwoofer in the premium segment. But the premium segment right now is populated with a lot of modular soundbars. And if you're wondering what a modular soundbar is, then you can definitely check out one of my videos. I'm going to link that in the description as well. So let's first of all get started with the price of the Sennheiser Ambio Plus. It is also a modular soundbar, which means you can buy the soundbar first if you want and you can buy the subwoofer later. So the bar alone is priced at approximately 1.4 lakhs. It could be a little cheaper based on when you are watching this. And the subwoofer is priced at a whopping 70,000 uh, rupees. But if you're looking at getting a package for both of them together right now, it's priced at about 2, 2.1 uh, lakh rupees. Again, this could be a little cheaper based on when you are watching this. And one unique thing about the Ambio Plus, which I'm going to talk about later, is it is taking modularity to another level by letting you connect whichever subwoofer you want to it. But before we dive deep into anything, if you just want the quick version of this review whether the Sennheiser Ambio is worth it or not, the Ambio Plus, uh, to be more specific, then yes, it absolutely is. Before we dive into the performance, Here's a demo of audio. Of course, it's copyright free music from YouTube and some gaming audio that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to talk about audio as a whole in this review. So take a look at the demo first. Okay, now that you've heard the demo, let's talk about the performance. But before we get into uh, the performance, let's talk about how you set up the soundbar. Now, I used HDMI ARC in the box. You actually get the soundbar itself, a power cord and an HDMI cable. When you buy the subwoofer, you just get the uh, subwoofer and the power cord. And of course, with the soundbar, you get a remote control as well. Now, when we talk about the performance, a very important thing to note is that you need to calibrate the soundbar, which you can do using the smartphone app. So you just download the smartphone app. I'm showing you a screen grab of my phone as to where I went and, uh, you know, did the setup using the phone and not uh, the remote control itself. Of course, you have to connect it via 
EARC or ARC to your TV and the HDMI cable goes into the back of uh, the sound bar. You plug in the subwoofer, you'll see a little white light come on, which means that the subwoofer and the sound bar are paired together. If they don't, you can simply press the pairing button on both. And once you have the app, you can just follow the on-screen instructions on the app and it is going to tell you that the soundbar is connected and it's connected to the Wi-Fi as well in case you need to do a software update to the soundbar. As of recording uh, this video, there was no update available. However, while you are setting up the soundbar, there's one very important thing that I recommend you do and that is calibrate your room to the soundbar. Now, I uh, use this soundbar in the room that I've been using as a theater. That's where I've been using the Yamaha YS209. So I have made it specifically for a theater-like setup, which is a couple of chairs to sit on the TV and an entertainment desk. The rest of the room is used for a little bit of storage and a few more things. But I do have a nice carpet there to absorb the sound for bass and a little bit of acoustic tuning in the room. But that's something that anyone can do at home. It's not like I've gone out of my way to make this a perfect theater room with like, you know, soundproofing on the wall, nothing like that. It's kind of a normal bedroom that's been converted into a, you know, entertainment room. Once you calibrate the soundbar, I highly recommend you switch the Ambio mode on, keep the sound uh, setting to adaptive and just forget about it because the soundbar actually sounds amazing and the soundbar is so good that if you are watching a low quality compressed sound, it is actually going to sound bad from the soundbar. So if you subscribe to some services like Netflix and Apple TV, you are going to have a great experience even on Amazon Prime Video, but there are some uh, streaming services that have really bad compression when it comes to audio quality and you can uh, make that out and that's just a testament to how good the soundbar is. So let's talk about some actual real world performance now. When it comes to movies, I saw stuff like John Wick uh, Chapter 4, I've been catching up on Wheel of Time, the new Castlevania series on Netflix, Mission Impossible, I saw a couple of action sequences uh, from there and I have a standard suit of, uh, you know, action sequences that I watch or movies that I watch, like A Quiet Place is a great example of really quiet situations and a lot of dynamic sound. Ready Player One is a great example of Dolby Atmos content, the race at the 13 minute mark. And believe me, when I put on Ambio, uh, the Ambio mode on, put it on adaptive, closed my eyes, I could actually hear the cars flying above me and on the sides, it was that immersive. No sound actually came really from behind me, but it was very close to my side and very close up front and right on top above me as well. That is how good virtual surround sound and of course the fact that this soundbar has drivers firing in all directions coming at you. So needless to say that if you're looking for a great one solution fits all kind of a soundbar, I highly recommend this one. And I also recommend getting it with a subwoofer because even though the soundbar itself has two bass drivers, I recommend a subwoofer because it is going to add to that punch. Whether you choose uh, the Sennheiser's own added subwoofer that comes or something which is a third party subwoofer of your own is entirely up to you because the soundbar gives you the flexibility of giving you a subwoofer output right at the back of the bar. So you aren't locked into Sennheiser's ecosystem and have to purchase their soundbar. You can marry this to a third party soundbar. The only catch is that it's going to be a wired connection and not a wireless one. So that's something to keep in mind. When it comes to music also, you can hear the instruments if you have high quality audio at your disposal from fingers picking at the guitar to actually the drumstick hitting the hi-hat. That's the kind of clarity I got when I was listening to music, be it classical rock, rock music, um, even Arijit Singh's voice was sounding absolutely fantastic. If you listen to stuff like Daft Punk or The Weeknd also, for example, the music was quite enveloping. And if you do find the bass to be a little too powerful or some of the audio to be too pronounced, I highly recommend switching off Ambio when you are listening to music. You can keep it as at adaptive or music based on your requirements, but I do recommend playing around with the sound settings. If there's one con that I have with this soundbar, and that's probably the only con that I have, is that you cannot reduce the subwoofer level like you can on so many other soundbars manually using the remote control or the app. So if you just want to reduce the bass a little bit to suit your room, you aren't going to be able to do that uh, on the soundbar because there are no dedicated controls for the bass. You can control other aspects of it like the volume, the ambio, the sound mode, but you can't reduce the bass. And I feel that is a big miss for a soundbar, which is so 
dynamic in its nature and it's giving you the ability to add an external subwoofer now a lot of subwoofers are going to have knobs at the back where you can control the level so that's a kind of a saving grace but if you are getting Sennheiser's own subwoofer if you want the wireless experience you can't control the level of the subwoofer and I found that to be a really really big bummer but overall the sound output is absolutely fantastic I even played a lot of games and the PlayStation 5 recently got an update for Dolby Atmos and even the Xbox supports it I have uh, two videos of the audio and video setting of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X for audio video settings, the best optimal settings. I'm going to link that in the description as well. You guys can definitely go check that out. Having said that, playing games like Uncharted, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon, Forbidden West, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and all these games do support 3D audio from Sony. And if you pump up the volume on the soundbar, you can actually hear the bullets flying around you, the sound coming from different directions, and it just gives you a great immersive experience. Similarly on the Xbox side, right? Play games like Doom Eternal, or even something like Gears 5, which supports Dolby Atmos or Forza Horizon, and you do really feel the grunt of the cars and the bangs of each gun, especially in Doom Eternal, which is such a beautiful soundtrack married to the sound of the guns. It's great. At no point did I feel the need to put the volume of this soundbar above 60 to 70 percent because it just filled the room with a lot of sound, be it for watching movies or music or playing games. And like I said, uh, you should definitely, definitely synchronize the soundbar to your room's environment because the difference after synchronizing it and then using Ambio gives you a very good virtual surround sound experience. So for those of you that are looking for a simple review that's just going to talk about the sound performance, I highly recommend this soundbar if you are in the premium space. It goes up against the likes of Sony, Samsung and Sonos which are available in India and um, I am going to start talking about how it compares to the others and get into a little bit of technicality such as the number of drivers it has. But here's where the short review ends. If you are looking for a great soundbar in the premium segment, then the Sennheiser Ambio Plus can definitely be one that you consider, especially with the subwoofer if you want the package. But if you want to save a little bit of money and, or if you have your own subwoofer that you really like the base output for, this has a subwoofer out as well. Now let's get into some of the technicalities of it, starting with the connectivity options. Actually, it has an EARC output and it has two HDMI inputs, but they are HDMI 2.0, which means you can get only 4K at 60 hertz output. So it is not going to support a HDMI 2.1 devices. So if you want to connect your gaming consoles like the PS5 or the Series X, you're going to have to connect that to your TV. So yeah, if you have only two HDMI 2.1 ports on your TV and one is the EARC port, it's going to get occupied by the soundbar and the sound is compensating you with only uh, 2.0 ports. And at this price point, I feel that is a big downer because the Sony HD A7000, which is Sony's flagship uh, soundbar, gives you two HDMI 2.1 ports with full support for a 4K at 120 Hertz VRR ALLM, which means that you can actually connect your gaming consoles or even the Apple TV 4K to the soundbar directly and save some ports on your TV if that's the way you like it. And that is a big downer, especially at this premium price point. It also has a subwoofer port like I spoke of and you can connect an additional external subwoofer, but it will be wired. That is something to keep in mind. It has an Ethernet port, of course, to connect to the Internet. And it, of course, has Wi-Fi because when you set it up, it connects to the Wi-Fi and you can update the soundbar as well. It has an optical port in case you're rocking an older TV that has optical and it also has auxiliary input, the red and white uh, ports in case you want to connect your old iPod if you still have that lying around for music or if you want physical connectivity because in my opinion a physical connection still trumps Bluetooth when it comes to audio performance on this soundbar. Of course it has a power port as well. So that is the connectivity options. Now Sennheiser is actually marketing this as a 7.1.4 experience without rare speakers. So this modular soundbar from Sennheiser, the Ambio Plus, only has the bar itself and the subwoofer. It has no rare speakers and there's no way for you to add rare speakers. And I feel that's a bit of a miss because even though the sound experience, virtual surround sound or the side firing and up firing drivers that it's giving you is actually covering you from the front almost to your sides and a little bit above you but not really from behind you. So it's more like a 5.1.2 experience rather than a 7.1.4 because remember the 7.1.4 also talks about channels which are behind you and above you slightly behind you, right? So when we talk about the driver setup, 
It has three front firing drivers, which is great for left, right and front. It has two side firing drivers, which is great for a surround sound left and right experience and two up firing drivers, which is great for the height experience with Dolby Atmos and two up firing subwoofers, which is actually very unique when it comes to the driver setup of a soundbar that it has up firing subwoofer uh, drivers, but nonetheless, the bass experience is quite good. And this unique up-firing bass driver nature extends to the Sennheiser Ambio Plus uh, subwoofer as well. It's not a side-firing sub, it's not a down-firing sub, it's actually an upward-firing uh, sub. And I found that experience to be a, a little too bass-heavy at times for me, referring back to the initial part of my review where I said that I wish uh, you, know, you could control the bass because if I could reduce the bass a little bit, it would be perfect for the kind of uh, room setup that I have where a front-firing or a side-firing subwoofer actually fits really, really well. So how does this compare to the other sound? Oh, before we get into the comparison, the remote control. Uh, I don't think I've seen such a well-built remote control for a soundbar from any other competitor. I mean, Sony has good remote controls. The Yamaha YS209 that I have has a flimsy remote control. Samsung comes with fairly decent remote controls, quite minimalistic, in line with what their TVs offer but they do feel like pretty standard remote controls that you would expect from a soundbar where they're compromising a little bit on the build quality but here the build quality is fantastic it's great to hold the buttons are nice and clicky it is weighty and it has two rubber feet on the remote control as well so you can keep it down properly and it has a little bit of a grip if you leave it on a coffee table it's, it's actually one of the better remote controls that i have seen on a soundbar now let's compare this to what we get when we look at the Sony HD A7000. Like I said, I have reviewed that soundbar and I'm going to link that in the description as well. Now, Sony's soundbar, the HD A7000, let's do a price comparison first, right? The uh, Sennheiser Ambio Plus, the bar itself is priced at about 1.4 lakhs as of me making this video and the Sony is priced close to 1.2 lakhs. The subwoofer for, uh, you know, the Sennheiser is priced dedicatedly at about 70,000 rupees. And if you're looking for the package deal, like I said, it's going to cost you 2 lakhs, uh, 10,000 rupees approx. But the uh, Sony, now the Sony comes with the option of two subwoofers, the SW3 or the SW5. Remember, you can, remember, you can marry any subwoofer you want with a wire to the Sennheiser, giving you more flexibility. In case of the Sony, you get the SW3 and the SW5 subwoofers and based on which subwoofer you choose or the surround speakers. Remember, Sony also supports rare surround speakers. Two options, the SARS3, which are standard front firing, uh, you know, surround speakers. So you're going to have to keep them at ear height facing you. It also has the SARS5, which has a front driver, a side driver and an upward firing driver, which means it's going to give you more of a surround experience when you place it around you. Based on the package that you choose or the permutation and combination that you choose this will fetch you anywhere from 1.8 to 1.9 lakh rupees to uh, 2.1 2.2 lakh rupees again depends on when you're buying it if you're buying it offline i'm sure you can get it a lot cheaper now while the sennheiser has three front firing drivers the sony has five front firing drivers the sennheiser has two drivers firing on the side but the sony does not it has two beam tweeters on the side and both of them have two uh, you know drivers firing up of course sony has front facing base drivers in case you buy the soundbar without a subwoofer but the sennheiser has up firing base drivers now i'm not going to tell you which is better than the other because audio is really subjective both are great and i highly recommend you go and take a demo you can get a demo on an offline store for both these soundbars but i'm just giving you a setup where the Sennheiser can actually give you a wider sound stage from the front because of the side firing drivers whereas the Sony may feel a little more limiting but its virtualization is actually very good to give you a great surround sound experience. Where the Sony trumps the Sennheiser is with rare speakers to give you a fully immersive, the proper uh, virtual 7.1.4 or the actual 5.1.2 setup, which it really is. If these numbers are confusing you, let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best to either answer them or make a video explaining them to you. 
So that is it when it comes to uh, what Sony gives you and what Sennheiser gives you. Sony, of course, has the advantage of uh, the side firing drivers and the option of different subwoofers. The advantage of the Sennheiser is that it has very good virtualization when it comes to the surround sound experience and it gives you the flexibility of adding your own subwoofer in the future if you want something budget or if you want something that's on the high end or if you want something that is absolutely catering to your needs. So that is kind of a difference between the Sony and uh, the Sennheiser there's of course if you just want a full 11.1.4 setup you can check out the samsung q990c that has uh two upward firing drivers in the bar two side firing drivers in the bar two upward firing speakers uh on the surrounds two side firing uh, uh one front and one side firing driver on the surround speaker as well and five drivers up front in the bar with two of them firing on the side and samsung really knows how to give you that full package deal uh in one and uh the samsung q990c is currently priced under two lakhs it's close to the 1.8 uh, mark as of me making this video but that is a much 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 better option in fact you can get the samsung a lot cheaper if you know where to look offline bargaining is easier there but that is a great option overall my last point and this is a bit of a personal niggle it may not be one that concerns you as an on-screen display both the uh, Sennheiser and the Samsung do not give you an on-screen display which means when you connect it to the HDMI port and switch to that source you don't get anything on the display making the settings something you have to change either using the remote control the controls physical controls on the bar or the app in the case of the Sony, you actually do get an on-screen display making controlling the settings way easier and I wish other brands would really implement this because you are anyways connecting uh, the device to your TV via HDMI making this entire experience a lot more seamless. Coming to the actual physical controls of the Sennheiser, it has touch controls on top. I'm not a fan of touch controls. It also has this little white bar which kind of glows blue when you are, you know, connecting Bluetooth and all but it, it's just simple. I prefer a front display like the Sony HD A7000 which not only shows you your inputs but also shows you the volume level and you can dim it and control it. Um, even my Yamaha YS209 has this LED light of dots which go up and down based on the volume. It's just something that I'm still not used to. I prefer a display. Again, that's a very personal preference. You might be okay with it because the line that comes on the Sennheiser looks absolutely really really cool it also fits really well under a 55 inch tv i placed it on my entertainment cabin cabinet and had no problems whatsoever it fits perfectly under a 55 and a 65 inch tv will look very big under a 43 inch uh, tv and the subwoofer has a lot of weight and grunt to it that's about the build and design they all have rubber feet the subwoofer has four rubber feet the soundbar itself has two rubber feet holding it nicely firmly in place so it doesn't really move around uh, that much when it comes to the rest of the build it's actually a pretty nice looking uh, soundbar it has this uh, fabric kind of finish all around enveloping the entire uh, soundbar and the top has a slightly metallic feeling grill to it very premium finish all around but if you have a pet then the uh, you know the fabric grill on the front surrounding the speaker is going to catch dog hair so that is also something to keep in mind so like i said at the opening whether spending 1.4 lakhs on this soundbar is value for money or not is something you have to decide because in my opinion it actually sounds absolutely fantastic when it comes to pure audio output and the virtual surround sound that it gives you considering it has drivers firing in all different directions in the bar itself the subwoofer is a great option that's another pro if you are looking to stay in the Sennheiser ecosystem but I love the fact that you can connect your own uh, subwoofer to it physically using a cable and that goes for the subwoofer as well the subwoofer has uh, a cable port as well so if you have a home theater setup or you have an amplifier you can use this subwoofer and connect it to that amplifier as well which is another step in the whole modularity nature of uh, these soundbars the only con with the soundbar for me is that you physically cannot control the bass which means that you have to tinker with the other settings to get the perfect audio output having said that it's a great experience watching movies and tv shows and even playing some games using the soundbar with hdmi you do get two ports but they do not support 2.1 something that the sony offers so while features are something that is a one-time setup for you i really really think you should go to an offline store experience all the three soundbars that i've spoken about because the sennheiser brings something unique to the table considering it's a single bar 
with drivers firing in different directions. The Sony has its own technology and if you have a high-end Sony TV then marrying a Sony soundbar with a Sony TV gives you a different advantage and the same with the Samsung Q990C. All these three are flagship tier premium soundbars where you can't go wrong with either of them. But then again, like I said, I highly recommend you go and listen to these soundbars before making a purchase decision. The Sennheiser Ambio Plus is absolutely fantastic. And if you just want one behemoth giant bar, which is not going to mess around and have one commanding position, you should check out the Ambio Max as well. I'm going to link to my review of that one in the description uh, below. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, if you have any queries, let me know in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. I will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now.